Oh, yeah, I was just watching a video of his Fondiar, um that was recorded in 2002, Sahavas, and um, uh, she was in the video asking him, uh, excuse me, what is it like, what was it like for you to have gone from the third plane to the fifth plane? Could you, could you talk about that? <laughs> and, and he, he gave a long kind of explanation, but then the translator, I don't know what his name is, he seemed like a pretty serious kind of fellow. He kind of listened and listened and then his response, his response was like, you know, he said a lot, but, um, you know, you just remember Baba, these things come, but you just love Baba and these things, you know, they, they happen. And even he would tell Baba, like, these things are happening to me. And Baba would say, tell me what's happening to you. What is it? And then he would go into detail and he, Baba would just say, oh, that's nice. That's nice. Okay. Forget about it. Just keep loving me. Keep loving me. And, and these, things, these things will pass. It's okay. Don't, don't worry about it. And he was describing like laying in his bed and seeing the roof disappear and then seeing all the stars and then connecting with all the stars and then becoming t all light and then, and then realizing, oh, that's a distraction. And then we just go back to loving Baba. And like, it was, he, he just, he knew in himself that it was a distraction, that it wasn't the, the end all of like getting lost in that, in that, uh, he was describing, you know, or orchestra music and or all kinds of beautiful things, but he knew it was all, it wasn't, it wasn't the thing he was trying to go for. He just wanted to love Baba. So yeah, I just thought it was interesting. Yeah. 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 But it was funny seeing, it was funny seeing Fresh Day in the audience and she was just to see the live interaction with, with her and, and uh, Asfandiar, he, he barely looked up at her, you know, he was just like, so looking inward that it was almost like the crowd didn't even there was nobody there except baba and him <laughs> i just thought that was very interesting where did you see this video you can yes. see this on on youtube i maybe you can find the link okay i can find a link and, and put it in the in the chat box here um okay thank you but, but yeah yeah it was and then uh, somebody was talking about Baba, Ta ba what is his name? Baba Tahir? Ta yeah, Baba Tahir, yeah. Baba Tahir, who, who was mentioning that? Espandiar was. No, wasn't somebody recently, somebody brought that up, Baba oh. Tahir, in, in the group. Oh, uh-huh. They were asking if he was a person. Somebody can. No, I, I was saying J Baba to Jeff. I, I was trying to say J Baba. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I uh, wanted to thank you for that uh, beautiful song, Victory Unto the. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, we, were, we were at the center once for spring break, and it was Easter Sunday. And we were all gathered at Baba's house in the garden. And um, early morning time, um, you, uh, we, you, you sang uh, this at that time um, oh. as well. And uh, yeah. it, it, it felt so divine. We felt Baba's presence so much at that time on Easter oh. Sunday. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, sunrise. That, that time I remember we had come, we had, we, we were at the center um, for spring breaks. It was Sandeep's 18th birthday, um, April 24th, and that happened to be Easter Sunday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, beautiful, yeah. Those are wonderful occasions, and we, we, we missed it this year. Yeah. Hey, Alan. This damn, uh, damn, Pandemic, pandemic. That's what it is. <laughs> pandemic, yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, well, you know, just uh, responding to uh, Alan and and Spandiar. Spandiar had these experiences of the inner planes, but uh, it reminds me back in the '70s. One time, in Mondeley Hall, uh, the, the subject was the higher self and the lower self. This was being discussed with Erich. And it, it, the discussion had been going on for a while, and then this thought popped into my head. I said, Erich, 
I have a feeling that what we've done is we've divided the lower self into a, a higher part and a lower part. And the lower part is trying to realize the higher part. The lower part of the lower self is trying to realize the higher part of the lower self. And, and the, the, the higher self is really something entirely different. And he shot this look at me, you know, like, you know, of, of acknowledgement, kind of a surprise. But oddly enough, all the pla planes of consciousness are, are really the higher side of the lower self. It's not, we think that, oh, the, the planes are, are moving us into the higher self, but the higher self is completely different. Does that make sense? I mean, in other words, that's why Bob is trying to get us off from, from, from trying to realize the higher side of the lower self. He wants us to realize him, our real self. Yeah, that makes, that so, makes a lot of so sense. So Bob would just dismiss, you see all the stars, you're connected with all the stars you have, all these exalted experiences, they're still just experiences of the higher side of the lower self. Yeah. And and Baba's taking us directly to him, right. the real, you know, and it real. it doesn't necessarily have to have any fireworks. No Fourth of July fireworks. It's just yeah. simple love being put yeah. into action. <clears throat> yes, absolutely. Yeah. Coming from Baba. Yeah. Where you become a vehicle uh, and things are coming through you rather than from you. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's really interesting when, when I think, the, you know, even when I talk to like, let's say my mother about, about Baba, you know, um, she's always wanting to know some, some of the more like, um, miraculous aspects of him or like, can you, can, you know, what are some of the, the miracles or some of the, you know what I mean? Cause there's so many saints and she grew up in, in Lebanon. So, there's all these saints and these places of saints where, you know, people go and they like touch where this saint used to be. And then all of a sudden they're like, they're cleared of like herpes or whatever, or like, you know, they have all kinds of amazing things where like that actually happened to people, but then they attribute, you know, those type of things with, Oh, that must be the greatest of the great. Like that person is the greatest of the great. And, you know, I, you know, I just, I don't really have much to say to her. I'm like, I, I don't really have any examples to give you like about miracles, except, you know, like, you know, I, I just, I, I kind of, I just, I spent too much of my lifetime already like chasing that, you know what I mean? That aspect of, of reality or, you know, this life and uh, I'm not interested anymore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, but those, those uh, higher, the experiences of the higher side of the lower self give people some encouragement. You know, wow, something more than just this yes. ordinary life. Wow, you know, just like the Baba said that the, as Jesus, he gave these miracles. It kind of suggests to people that there's something beyond this ordinary life. There's, there's something beyond it. Even though the miracles are, are really, it, it challenges, you know, that, 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 that this isn't all that there is. There's something. Yeah. Different. And that's the, and, and so the, all these little miracles and everything uh, kind of let people know that maybe, maybe this isn't the be and all and end all this ordinary life. There's something yeah. de higher, deeper. Yeah. Yeah. But with Baba, he's has us just going for him, which is we're going for the essence and not the reflections of the essence. Yeah, yeah. It's just challenging for those who, I guess, if you if if in this lifetime, let's say you're not you you don't have that grace, then you know it's not something that you can necessarily explain. It'd, it'd be like. Some somebody who is a Baba lover, I, I think of it like them trying to explain to somebody who hasn't experienced. And it's nothing nothing about being more special or more different. It's just it's just 
it's like trying to explain like what what a lemon tastes like to someone who's never tasted a lemon or you know if, if somebody's never had that sort of grace then to try to explain to them well baba is this or baba is that that they're, they're like oh that's nice that that sounds cool but like it's not the same as if they had experienced baba's love and grace in their heart or had that awakened in them and then could therefore have the experience of like well i'm just not interested really in you know what i mean i'm not interested in the other stuff anymore i think it's sort of like uh it takes time or something before you have to come to the, till the fruit is ripe till you can get to the point where you're like i'm not interested in chasing the you know the the mazes of of uh magic tricks and all the things that are available yeah you know or uh yeah why worship the moon when you can worship the sun so to speak. <laughs> so yeah. Jack, all this this guys these saints who perform miracles they are on the higher side of the lower self yeah that's what you're trying to say yeah the saints, you know that perform miracles that everybody worship them because they are able to do miracles so yeah. they are on the highest part of the the lower self right yeah they are, that's, that's what it is mean us away the, the sufis say to realize God takes just one step, to step out of yourself. <laughs> you step out of your lower self into your higher self. It's just one step, not seven. Well, here's a beautiful thing. When, uh, when uh, uh, Rick Chapman went to see Baba in 19, I think it was 1965, <clears throat> and he was a real seeker. Uh, uh, he was a real spiritual seeker. And so when he got there, he was at Mirazad, and one of the first things that Baba said is, uh, don't seek spiritual experiences. Forget about spirituality. Forget, forget about the planes of consciousness. And, and Rick said in that moment, he realized Baba relieved him of traveling thousands of miles on the spiritual freeway up through the planes of consciousness to God. He, he, wow. could, he, he could just turn directly to Baba and not go on the freeway. <clears throat> I think of it, there's a little side road off of the, before you get on the freeway, the spiritual <laughs> freeway. There's a little side road and it leads to the approach road to Marizad, Marizad. And you take this little approach road and there you're in the company of Baba. Or beloved. So, Self-effacement rather than spiritual, uh, real, uh, realizing your spiritual potential, you are being effaced in love for the beloved. It's a different, a different path. Yeah. Not that there's yeah. anything wrong with, with, <clears throat> I mean, there are plenty of people sincerely, uh, there are saints that are on the planes of consciousness. There's nothing wrong with that. We, we could use a few more of those around. <clears throat> but what Bob is asking, <clears throat> you know, is asking that we, uh, you know, just turn to him and love him. Go for the, the, the sun and not the moon. Yeah. <clears throat> but uh, these people, there's a line, a Sufi line, <clears throat> that the river of the world is constant, the, the river of the world <clears throat> is constantly being purified by the saints who sit on its banks. Wow. <clears throat> so they perform a great function for us. Well, we, it, it, I was reading something in discourses where he was saying, Bob was saying, if you really come in, into tune with his rhythm, then you sort of, you sort of become like the, like the, the master becomes like the realization of his universal work. So we all <laughs> sort of take part in his universal work when we actually really come into tune with, with, uh, with him 
um, with mental con through mental contact. And that, uh, and this is, I mean, this is from discourses when you're saying yeah. if you really, if you really have that mental contact, it's like there's no difference. Um, like what as Fandier was saying, he was <clears throat> focusing on Baba so much inwardly that by the time he saw him again, he just really felt like there was really no, no point or no difference in seeing him physically versus when he walked around in his everyday life. He, Baba was just, Baba was there mm -hmm. with him so much so <laughs> so i just yes yeah, the little little things that matter yeah there's a a new book out about the the prem ashram boys called the boys i saw it <clears throat> yeah yeah we're yeah. hoping to have a book reading for that book mm -hmm. Yeah. Is there, is there anyone alive from that from that time period still? No, I, they've all passed on. Uh, I believe so. Yeah, because if you were born in nineteen, even nineteen twenty six or twenty seven. No, you, they were born. They were uh, at the earliest. Uh, the latest would have been nineteen fifteen. Oh yeah, I don't think there's anyone alive from nineteen fifteen right now. Year old, uh, <clears throat> yeah. Wow. That's wild. They'd have to be over 100 years old. <laughs> now, Pr Prakash is 105 over there. <laughs> you know. Where is Prakash? Is Prakash here? Oh, yeah, up the yeah. upper corner. That's, yeah, that's me. Oh, hi. I'm hiding on the side. Uh, yeah, actually, you know, uh, the thing you are talking about, Jeff and uh, Alan. Uh, the blindfolding is what happens, I think, with Baba. Uh, I think one instance I, uh, which uh, I can recall is when uh, Aloba came to our house, and I think I narrated the story yesterday, and he wanted the picture to be in one place, and as you walk in, he wants you to see the picture right in the front. That happened. And then we did Aarti. And after Aarti was over, <coughs> then... He suddenly points to my younger brother. He was only probably about 10 years old or something. And my dad is in front. And he points to my younger brother and says, he has more love for Baba than you, <laughs> to my father. <laughs> so, I mean, so they obviously have this capacity, I mean, which is so shielded. And, but, uh, I, and uh, so that's a blindfolding, I guess, that happens. But they have this innate ability to uh, help, uh, you know, yeah. <laughs> uh, in the effort of, uh, in, in Baba's love, I mean, to encourage and do things like that. So I, I had a, one more question, Alan. Did Esfandiyar uh, ever talk about the kind of music? Would he relate it to anything earthly? Are you asking me? Yeah, I mean, the, I mean, anybody, I mean, Jeff, you or anybody else. Oh. Uh, I was just thinking, I mean, they always keep talking about this celestial music, uh, some people hear. So I was wondering, I mean, I know Baba mentioned that it has no correlation to what we hear on earth, mm -hmm. but uh, I'm just still <laughs> trying to check. Uh, Prakash, which reminds me of one thing, when Baba came on to Machli Pratama on 22nd February 1954. He, he was received at a one kilometer away from the, those times we can call Machli Pratnam town. And he came we, along with the music. And then at four o'clock in the town hall, one of the great uh, clanet player, uh, his name is Pichalahari, whose song Manusuloni Marvam means the uh, what is in secret in the heart, nobody knows. Baba said, this song touched me so thing music. It's not, music is coming from now, from ages and ages the music has come. That's what Baba pointed out. We can reference, you can see in the Glimpses of God Man, Volume 5, uh, about uh, Masli Patnam 2, around 22nd floor, where Balnath also mentioned about this incident. Thank you. Thanks, Marchand. So, yeah. uh, uh, but Marchand, go back. Uh, 
What did Baba say? What were Baba's words? Baba said, this, is not, this music has touched my heart. And this music is not from this age. It is from the ages. I have been listening music. And it's a very touching. It touched my heart. The words are Manasuloni Marmo. That's what uh, is sang on the, it was played on the planet at uh, around four o'clock uh, in the evening at the meeting at town hall. Wow. Incidentally, that is my mother's place and where Baba seen me in my mother's womb on that day. Yeah, beautiful. Does anybody sing that song anymore, uh, Merchant? Uh, many, many. It's in a it's in a classical Hindustani Carnatic classical song. Oh. It is the Tyagaraja Kruti. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'll trace it out. Yeah. I can send you on YouTube. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I please. have that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Devya. I guess Devya is resting or something. And Lanita has fallen asleep. And I have, I have another story okay. from uh, Espanyar, if you want to hear it. Yeah. I don't know if you want to, I'm kind of going off on Espanyar here, but. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, he was saying that he heard, uh, or he read about the story of Baba Tahir, um, where he would sit up on a high mountaintop and it was snowing. And the uh, all around him, though, where the, the spring flowers were growing, because that's how much heat was em emanating from his body. So, you know, uh, it's funny I read this and he was like, well, this sounds kind of, sounds ridiculous, really. And so he, he didn't really pay any attention to it. But one day he had to, um, I guess, do some work. And so uh, in order to travel, he needed to take a donkey uh, to, you know, through these towns. And uh, I guess he had to go through through two different towns to get to where he needed to work and then all the way back to get home. And so when when he left, it was really, really snowing and it was a blizzard and it was kind of the snow was hitting him in the face really hard. And even the donkey was having a hard time walking and uh, moving forward because it started getting so cold. And so he was sort of starting to freeze like actually freeze and he was in the middle of this blizzard and then um i guess he got to the point where uh the donkey was just so cold that it just couldn't move forward anymore and so he just sort of went inside and he just immediately started you know he he, rem he was like i guess this is where i'm gonna die and then he remembered that baba told him i'm gonna see you one more time and so he realized i'm not gonna die and I'm just going to, I I just, you know, I'm going to bring Baba here. And when he did so, he felt like a hot, really, really hot bucket of water was poured over the top of his head. And when he did, when he felt that, the heat literally surrounded him to the point where um, it started heating up his donkey. And the donkey all of a sudden was getting heat and then was able to walk forward and was able to move. And then, but then every time he got off the donkey, the donkey couldn't move anymore. It would get frozen. <laughs> and so he had to get back on the donkey to heat it up and to keep going. And so then he realized, um, yeah, he was just, he was just saying that he realized that, you know, th these things happen and that uh, Baba Tahir, you know, he could see that, oh, well, maybe that could actually happen. So that was the story. Yeah, yeah I remember him sharing that. Yeah. He you was, might have been there. If you if you uh, were to meet Espandiar, you you were meeting a really great soul. I mean, he, he was so beautifully harmonized uh, from top to bottom. I met him. Yeah, mm -hmm. if you were to put your money on who was a real saint, I remember I was with Darwin one time. We had gone to see him. And Darwin said, you know, I I'm sure he's on the sixth plane. And wow. it's really something beautiful to behold. I mean, there, there's the embodiment, the, 
where you can get when you stay with Baba all those years. He was like real, real aged wine, the most exquisite. Do you know what years he lived to? How old he was? Oh, or when he died? <laughs> I can't remember. I mean, and I, I'm terrible about dates. Could have been 2010. 2005. <laughs> huh? Maybe the last five years. Yeah, you're right. Maybe it was in the last five years. It's not too long ago that he passed away. Yeah. He was in, in his 90s, yeah. Yeah. I met him in, at Northeast Gathering once. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Farshid was the translator. Yeah. Oh, very. It was amazing. Yeah, Baba really created a beautiful soul there, really. Yeah. yeah. Is Farshid still around? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he lives here in Myrtle Beach. Oh, he lives in Myrtle Beach? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, Rakesh, what's happening? Across the street from me. In Mumbai. Jai Baba, nothing. How was the gathering yesterday you joined in? You mean this, yeah, or this morning, I guess, yeah. Yes. You know, yes. Cyrus spoke very lucidly and clearly. I wanted to, uh, I had, I, I kept getting calls and everything, so I was, I in, but he is very, very clear explanation of Baba's metaphysics and teachings. I, you know, it, it was, yeah, it was, uh, it was lovely. Yeah. Was, who was that? Sorry, Jeff. Uh, a guy named Cyrus Kambata. Oh, I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cyrus. Yeah. Um, um, so we have these gatherings every day. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, I saw you talking and uh, unmuted your mic, and uh, I think once you unmuted your mic, you had stopped talking by the time. Uh -huh. Yeah, I was in and out because I was at work, so mm. so I wasn't yeah. exactly free. Yeah. Hey, Rakesh, it's what, what time is it over there? It's eight thirty, eight forty. Eight thirty in the morning. Yeah, eight thirty in the morning. Yes. Wow. It's eight oh two over here p.m. <laughs> yeah. 1102 here. Good night, Jay Baba. Yeah. See you, Good night, Jay Baba. Yeah. Good night. Hey, one Jay last Baba. question. Yeah. <laughs> Was the Espandiar the guy who uh, left the place and then went to his uh, town in Iran and then he couldn't see Baba for a long time and then Baba advised him to, um, you know, pray to the crop? I mean, uh, the harvest that is growing. Yeah. And uh, he is a gentleman, right? Yeah. Yeah, Baba asked him to uh, pray before his cherry trees, mm. you know, uh, as a way of getting money to go to see Baba at Guru Prasad. This is in the 60s. Yeah. So he did. Mm. Uh, he, you know, because uh, Baba had asked him and he did that. And he had a bumper crop of... Yeah. Carries. And then there was all this cold wind uh, weather that came in and ruined all everybody else's uh, uh, cherry trees, their crops. So he was, he was the main source of, of cherries in that area. So he made enough money to go see Baba after many, many years, probably 30 years, and saw him at Guru Prasad. He stayed there for a couple of weeks. Yeah. You know, um, yeah, I just happened to think of something that it, it's kind of uh, semi-related. There was a woman named, uh, her la a British lady named, her last name was Bird, B-I-R-D. But she had this inner relationship with Baba for years and years. And then when she went and met him here, I believe in 56, she had a hard time 
uh, connecting her inner experience, her inner Baba and the Baba who was right in front of her. You know, she found a little, little difficult to integrate the two. Can you imagine what, a, what an experience? In other words, the Baba within you is always there and the Baba out, outside of you, he gets in the car and he drives off. <laughs> you know what I mean? She had a hard time, uh, you know, integrating both her inner experience of Baba and then seeing him outside of her. That, that, that's a nice dilemma to be in, you know. I feel like Charles spoke, uh, Charles Haynes spoke about that. Oh, uh-huh. Yeah, and yet, and he found Baba, the one he had within was matched up with yeah. the Baba outside. Yeah. 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 I, so, I mean, you, you guys remember the story? You mean... Uh, 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 I mean, the one Charles spoke about matching uh, uh, your well, inner self with, uh, you know, Baba in the physical well, form. He, he, you know, he met Baba in, I mean, uh, just briefly, he met Baba in 58 here, 1958. And, you know, he had this whole experience. And now in 1962, he was going over there to see Baba. And he had, you know, he had kind of internalized Baba and all the memories. But is the Baba that he's coming to going to be the same Baba that he had experienced four years earlier? And he was, he was th uh, relieved to find out that was the same Baba. But this woman um, found that uh, her inner Baba was, was uh, different. I mean, different in the sense that how you um, fill in the, the, the attributes of Baba and the experience of Baba within, and then the outer Baba may, be, may not kind of fit the inner experience that you've, you've been creating. I mean, suppose, you know, you have Baba, he's always there for you and everything, and he loves you and everything like that, and then you see him in front of you and he he gives you a disapproving look, you know, oh, right. <laughs> you know, oh, oh, wait, that's, hey, wait, I want the Bobby inside, you know, that guy's a lot more, <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, I can yeah. see. No, that's true, yeah. It, that's, you know, it, it happens to me, uh, not with Baba, obviously, uh, but yeah. uh, when you read a novel and then you have a, a memory of this particular character that uh, is being portrayed, yeah, and then suddenly they start producing a TV series on that, yeah. and I could never reconcile, uh, yeah. you know, the image I had with what is shown. And I would, I mean, this is to me even watching this uh, series, even though you know it's pretty it's something I really like. But uh, yeah, it, it happens with uh, for me. It happened with Sherlock Holmes and yeah. Arthur Conan Doyle stories, and I then know. I just couldn't relate. The yeah. guy who I see on the TV. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I, I know what you mean. And Lord of the Rings. I mean, yeah. oh, it, that, it, that, it was just nothing like the experience <laughs> from the book. Yeah, yeah they, they skipped out on Tom Bombadil. Yeah, and, 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 and they were, they're always just fighting the whole time, you know. You know, just one battle after another, and that's not the book. But yeah, that's just... <clears throat> but... Well, that, um, the book is always better, you know. Yeah. When you read a book and then you watch a movie, it's such a disappointment. I don't know why, but it's always like that. You know? Yeah. Well, At least in my experience. Yeah. Especially a traditional movie, it's only two hours. You know, how can you get a whole book into two hours? And uh, the series, the, these series are better, you know, at, at they're, they're much more in depth yeah 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 that reminds me of uh when i i, I don't know if you, i had a, i had a dream with where i knew that baba was going to step into the room and uh i was with all these people and i decided i was going to sit somewhere at the top of the stairs so that when he walked up the stairs i could you know get a glance at him and maybe he could shake my hand and uh and he came and he came up the stairs, you know, I found my seat really fast because I knew he was coming. So I found my seat real fast and sat down. And, um, and then he came up the stairs and I, the monolith behind him. But he just, he was, 
I wrote about it somewhere. I don't know if I could find that writing, but but it wasn't like seeing a celebrity or it wasn't like seeing somebody that was shocked to see. It was like his presence just sort of demanded a reverence that I couldn't understand. And in the dream, the, the person that I was, was thinking like me, but was not aware of my life as Alan, obviously. And, and so, but he was thinking the way I think he was thinking, Hey, how come I'm not feeling like all this bliss that all these people were telling me I was going to see when I, when I see this guy, Baba, how come I'm not feeling all that bliss? And so he comes up the stairs and he was, he's walking past a little bit past us and somebody to my left goes, goes Baba. And, and he looks back and, but he's going to, but he continues walking, but then something all of a sudden surprises me. I, for like suddenly just reach out and I go, and I go, Baba, Baba. And I reach out my hand to him. And it was almost like, it was like a hiccup. It came, like came out of me like, Hey Baba. Like it just came out like randomly. And uh, well, I don't know randomly, but so then Baba stops and he turns around real fast. And I remember the look, how fast his eyes were looking. And he, and he looked down I mean, and he walked back and he shook my hand, but he shook it like this. He shook it like, very, very gentle, like this, with just the finger, just the fingertips. And then he walked off and, and then I was like, how come I just, in the, in, then again, I was thinking, how come I didn't feel any, I didn't have, still didn't feel any bliss or I didn't feel any, I just felt like the room was very reverent and I, but I was expecting something more. And then it just, yeah. And then somebody, you know, the lady was like, okay, the program's going to start and you owe us like 100 rupees or something. And I was upset and. <laughs> I was upset and I was, you know, I was just, but, but I just, I don't know, something about that dream when I woke up, I just was like, uh, something very peculiar about it because uh, he was very much there and I felt his fingers, but, but I did not experience the sense of, uh, overwhelming, overwhelm, yeah. or, um, it was just very natural. It just felt very natural. Yeah. yeah. And, and Eris used to say, quote, Baba over and over again, to be natural, is most godly. Yeah. That's Baba's words. To be natural is the most godly. Yeah. Naturalness is the last stage of the path. So what does this natural mean? What well, Baba is not I, mean of being natural. Be, I take it to be heart natural. Not desire natural. Wow. You know, heart natural, you know. Oh you, heart natural. Yeah, you can you can tell when you're being natural. And that's the right, it's not, he didn't say to be spiritual is most godly. He said to be natural is most godly. So that's, uh, that's, that's really. Natural means being true to yourself, being true to oneself. Not, not always the case. You, be, being true to, being true to truth. Uh, because not you're all true. Your, your own personal truth may not be the truth. So whose truth? Baba's truth? Yeah. Well, the truth or Baba's truth. In other words, you say, you might say, uh, I, I didn't share uh, my uh, lunch with you when you were hungry because I wanted to be true to myself. I was hungry, so I, and you didn't earn the. I, I earned the money. I'm I'm going to eat this food, and if you're hungry, that's too bad, because I'm going to be true to myself. Whereas the truth might be, in that moment, to be generous. I don't know if that makes. This sense. is not the natural. This is not. This is like being not generous. You know. Yeah, to be generous. Be spontaneously generous is a natural thing. Oh, okay. I mean, Eris used to say, you know, I mean, I think when we're natural, we don't have to think about all these things. We just kind of do the loving thing. We're patient when that's required. We've got a sense of humor when that's being called for. We're generous when that's being called for. There's not a whole lot of problem with, should I do this? Should I do that? This should be, no, I shouldn't do that. You know, all of that is gone. 
and you just respond spontaneously and naturally. Okay. So we, we know when we're doing that and then we know when we're not doing that. So you start to keep favoring the natural side, your natural responses. Well, I suppose it's like uh, if you don't have all the worry of, you know, uh, acceptance or rejection, you know, th and then you don't have to necessarily, I guess that's for me, that comes to mind, like, then I can be most natural. Like if I imagine myself not having uh, any sense of needing to be accepted by anyone or yeah. fear of rejection by anyone, then maybe I could really relax. Yeah, <laughs> not, not forcing yourself to be this or that to please anyone or to... Yeah. Right, just be who you are, you know. Yeah, I mean, luckily, uh, naturalness is not an exalted experience that's outside our reach. You know what I mean? Which is good. We can keep coming back to this thing that's that's very much, very deeply human rather than having to reach some high bliss or, you know, hear the yeah. of the spheres. Bob has made it quite simple. So it's just basically, you can get at naturalness by getting rid of a lot of the unnaturalness. Well, that starts to remind me of when Baba talked in in uh, in God's Hand, that book in God's Hand, when he mm -hmm. talks about unnatural light and then natural light and then unnatural darkness and natural. Dark. I was like, I I could not keep my my brain was just getting fried yeah. reading the first paragraph. <laughs> yeah, I know um, that, that was. <clears throat> but um, I mean, sometimes you know you can be in a scene where. Uh, someone might just naturally uh, reach out to somebody, you know, and, and then they don't. And then you think, wow, that was strange. That was a, a kind of a, the normal thing would have been to reach out to that person. Yeah. Uh, to help them out. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, you see instances of it all the time. But naturalness, I mean, thank God. We don't have to become these great spiritual beings. We can be just naturally our uh, natural our, our natural selves. I mean that's okay. I gotta go because Alan keep muting me. So I guess he's just subtly he's telling me to shut up. So I gotta go. I didn't mute you. You didn't. Who mute me? I was not mute. I don't Sorry, know. Alan. Did you, Angela? No. Angela, we haven't, uh, uh, we, you, we've heard every word you've said. We I can't hear anybody now. Everybody's mute for me. Really? Can you hear me? Yeah, we hear you. Yeah. Prakash. We've, yeah, we've, I can. We've I, I can. The entire time. Yeah. No, I, I only muted you uh, uh, about 20 minutes ago when I told you I was going to do it because there was an echo. Yeah. Can really? you hear the echo now? Wow, now, now you're, you're frozen. <laughs> I'm frozen? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. you're frozen for me. Loosen you up guys are, Loosen You up. guys are frozen for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lenita, you're just projecting. <laughs> I mean, I'm not the only one. I'm, I'm the only one who's not frozen. Everybody, the three of you are frozen. Yeah. It's just my connection here is kind of weird, I'm, you know. Yeah. It is. Yeah, the, it is. I can. I can see now that it's my, my connection with. Uh, yeah, I think it's the bandwidth. That's what I'm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway, I think. Uh, I, uh, let's see what time it is. I think yeah. I might to bed an early hour, unless uh, anybody can think of. Something we've got uh, Ashima. Now, is this Pari from uh, Mumbai, who came to the Yusahavas? Yes, yes. Okay. Pari. Okay, Jai Mar Baba Jeff and Jai Mar Baba Prakash. It's yeah. Mahajan Nori taking. Okay. Yeah. See. Jai Mar Baba. Jai Mar Baba. Do your japa. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I have to do nam jap. Yeah. Nine to ten. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 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 good. 
Yeah, me and me and Pari were talking the other night. I don't know if Pari's here. Oh, she had her hand raised. Asked to unmute. Hey, Pari. Hey. I, where did I see Pari? I saw her. Pari, I think you're unmuted now. Pari not configured her mic. Ah. And Maybe you, you she she might have to go out and come back. Aha. Uh -huh. She she has her hand raised. Yeah, yeah. Ah. Huh. I don't know. Uh, Dinku, I don't see D I mean I see Dinku's name, but and Divya. Oh there you are. Good. <laughs> I've been lurking and just listening to you all, uh -huh. just enjoying every minute of it. Thank you. Oh, oh good. Well, we're uh, just, just. Uh, so they waking up in India. They start showing up. Now we're going to bed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you guys are getting up. We're getting yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. yeah. I just. Oh. Now, I just wanted to ask, uh, is there any website from where we can order our other Baba books apart from the centers? Hmm. In the US and over uh, and here in India. Is well, the Sharia, Jeff? The Sharia, they can order from, from India to Sharia? Yeah, I think that's a little, uh, but you've got uh, Meher Darbar. Mm. Oh yeah, in Amenagar, you know. Oh, Amenagar, yeah, yeah. Maybe Rakesh would know uh, that that the way. Yeah, that... Pushkar, he he would uh, he can courier yes, to you. And then you, he's probably got uh, he's got a lot of the books there. A lot of books, even. And, and then he can mm. just send it from Amenagar to to Bombay. Okay, thanks. Yeah, and he what can about send in the U.S. He... He can but, uh, courier to the U.S. also. He could courier directly to U.S. Yeah. Get in touch with oh, Pushkar. Yeah. He will mail yeah. to you. Mad <coughs> yeah. Can't and, believe you're talking about these guys in India. And I met them. I met Pushkar. <laughs> yeah. We have, uh, we have uh, Divya and Pari both raising their hands. I think they're, okay. I don't know if they're trying to. So, I don't know if fun. so much you fun. Can you hear me? <laughs> Divya, yeah. Hello. Yeah. Yeah, okay, let us speak. Yeah. Hi. Uh, Pari, you can go first. Let Pari go first. That's fine. Okay. Hello, Jay Baba Jeff. Yay, yay, Pari. Good. Yes. You, you had, Hi, Alan. Hi, Pari. You had your hand raised? Did you have any? Oh, yes. You were asking whether I was the Pari that attended the youth sahavas, and I didn't know how to unmute the mic, so I raised my hand. Okay, good. Okay. <laughs> I I know you. I know exactly who you are. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Ali look like a, a rock star, a band leader, rock star band leader. Yeah. With his yeah. yeah. What did you have any? Yeah. Hi. 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 I just wanted to know what time did you start this meeting, uh, Jeff? At your time? We started. Not the RT starts at 9.30 our time, a p.m., which connects with uh, 7 a.m. RT, your time. Okay. So by 7.10, you start uh, talking on topic, Seven, whatever. Finish at 10.30 p.m. Oh, here. I, I usually, I'm at work, so I come in, I come in about a... <clears throat> Devia. An hour yeah. Late. Devia, we say the prayers together. And then we have live sharing of music and poetry and all the participants can participate. After that, we yeah. have, you know, a moment of silence, three avatar Meher Baba Kijays, and this is the informal part, post arty. We call it the post arty party. <laughs> so basically you start at seven o'clock Bombay time, seven, seven, ten no. Bombay time. No. We, we party time. twice a day, seven and seven. So, okay. Yeah. And or, this is the post arty so, chat, so. Another quick question. Yeah, go yeah. ahead. Do you guys like, it's like, you know, in the Samadhi, 
like they have the RT every morning, evening at seven, the same way it goes, same time. And after the RT, they have the Baba song singing till eight o'clock. So we do that. And after eight, then they have this informal talk. Yeah. So they go according to the Bombay time always. Yeah. Samadhi seven. time. Yeah. Yeah. Samadhi Bombay time, right? Yeah. India time, IST. So the, nothing connected to these talks, but you know, the book God Speak, right? God Speaks. The Bible or whatever the I mean I have actually started doing the class with Jimmy Modi but I stopped in between because I was very preoccupied I had a lot of stuff to do in the house but just about that book is there a simpler version of it I mean I I don't know when I'm reading it I just feel it's so repetitive and yeah is it like a summary of it because you know when I heard Cyrus's talk last evening and uh, when he said with all the knowledge and all the intelligence and all that really doesn't fall anywhere at the end of it. You know, you can just be full of love, wholeheartedness and things like that. Yeah. You, you want to get God Speaks in two hours? A lot. I would like to read much more what, literature. What you, have, have, you, have you seen the movie um, Groundhog Day? Mm. No, I don't. I don't know. I may have. I may have not. I don't know. Anyway, that's the whole theme of 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 the God speaks in two hours. It's well, a great movie. No. It's a comedy, but it's well done. Yeah, uh, just yeah. a joke. No, it's actually. I mean, it's the whole purpose. You keep coming back until you do it with real love. You keep coming mm. back, life after life. Sometimes you're ambitious. Sometimes you're um, well, you come back and you try all these different things and eventually love wins out. Hey, Devia, so are, that you, are you asking yeah, if, for, if for a book for, a, a, for literature, literature that is easier for you to read or, or are you just beginning this, this quest of... No, 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 I've been in the faith for seven years, but I'm not much of a reader. I'm more of an audio person. I like to... Yeah. Uh, listen, yeah. I like to hear, hear tube. I don't, I don't know, reading just puts me to sleep. I don't know why. Yeah. But uh, Dave, I'm more of a person. You know what uh, Baba would say? Sometimes I would say to point to someone, say, you read God Speaks seven times. You read God Speaks three times. Sometimes he'd point to somebody, you don't need to read God Speaks. <laughs> Some people, because it, it's for certain people, but not everyone. It's, it sounds like you, uh, you know, you, you like the loving aspect of Baba, the personal side, and the metaphysics is not, doesn't appeal to you. It, it doesn't appeal to No, me. no, no. In fact, clarity appeals a lot to me, but at the end of it, you know, I, I like to listen to you because you're, there is a lot of clarity, you know, there's a lot of preciseness and uh, you can understand, but at the end of it, uh, when I hear Cyrus and I, you know, hear, uh, read a few things and maybe hear a few things on YouTube, at the end of it, it, it just boils down to experience and love and wholeheartedness, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So what is the purpose of having all this and not, you know, having the other side? Why? Well, see, the, the, what, what valuable value of God speaks is that most people's uh, thinking just in growing up, they've thrown all of these crazy ideas into their head. And mm -hmm. they're all an example. So you can read something like God Speaks. It's like a chiropractic adjustment. <clears throat> Everything that's out of place gets aligned. It gets integrated. But if, if, if that's not your problem... You know, uh, oh, I want uh, to hear. I just find it very repetitive, a little boring. I just wish it was summarized, and you know, it was just, just simpler. I mean, not simpler, but just yeah. I don't know, a little, just uh, less in detail. You know, yeah. maybe maybe I'm just an impatient person. Less in detail and just yeah. uh, summarize the book, like you said. Let me see the movie. You know. Yeah. Now, what about? Uh, I mean, Cyrus, you you were there with Cyrus this morning, right? Well, not I, this month, last evening. I mean, yesterday evening. Yeah, yeah, right, right. I mean, what he uh, he was reading from Sparks, right? I, I don't know which one, yes, but yes, I just, yes. Uh, but yeah. He yeah. explained it very Fox. clearly. I would say he explained it very clearly. You don't need to know much more than that. I, um, I don't think 
you need to know much more than that because eventually it comes down to your practical life, trying to be loving in the present. And you can have all of the God speaks and know all the planes of consciousness and their attributes, but is it going to help you to be loving in the present? Um, it boy, that's and boy. you actually just said in this uh, today this morning that uh, the planes don't matter when there's a side road directly to Baba, isn't it? Yeah, if you, I, I mean, our work is to be loving for Baba in the present. Whether we know all about the planes of consciousness or doesn't matter all the different states, uh, but it you know so. It, I think you got the right idea. You know, I, I actually recently, just myself, um, sat down and and forced myself to read God Speaks because I had been reading so many different people talking about it that I was like, I tried <laughs> over the years to read it and I would get through the, through the paragraphs and I was literally, I would actually feel my skin crawling. Like I couldn't handle the repetition. I was like going to rip my hair out. I was like, Baba, I can't, I cannot read this. And I, I would stop every time. And finally, just recently, actually, just about a month ago, I just said, okay, you know what? I'm, Baba, I am going to sit and read this thing that you say people need to read. So I just sat for maybe like, I don't know, make five hours in a, on my day off. And I just forced myself. So I, did, I fell asleep three, three times. But then I just woke up. And I'd continue, and I finally got through the first eight chapters, one through eight, because that's the one that he he dictated himself yeah. personally. So that's the one I was focused on. And really, you know, I don't know what, what it was, but I know that Don Stevens mentioned that you know, the fact of reading it was just it held like something like the energy of an atomic bomb in, in each word. You know, when you read it, it's very. I don't know, but for me, I don't know what I got. Yeah. Necessarily, except that I, I just sort of said, this is something I have to do. And I, but that was for me and it was recently, yeah. but, um, hmm. it kind of helped me with my fear of death, to be honest with you. That was what I got from it personally. Yeah. yeah there are things in there that are very helpful, wow. but it, it's not like uh, you have to take it like castor oil. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, there's, there might be a time when you actually uh, be, uh, you're in the mood for it. Yeah. And, and it goes pretty well. I yeah. haven't, I, I, mean, I haven't here. read God Speaks since, I made myself read God Speaks in, the, I read it in the tomb. Whoa. Back then when you could read books in the tomb. And it took me a couple of weeks. And it was, it was one of the greatest experiences of my life. And what it, what it yeah. proved to me is, is that what I, I need to proceed with my heart. Uh, where I'm going, I need to proceed with my heart and not with my mind. Baba convinced me in reading that book that the mind was not going, in all of its heights and flights, the mind was not going to get me where I needed to go. Yeah. And it, I must have thought somehow the mind would play a part. Uh, or, uh, but... So it, it shut down my uh, my mind as one of the as the what can I say as the the tool for getting at the depth into the depths of myself. I was going to have to go uh, in my heart to the depths. And just reading that book kind of basically said, "Yeah, Jeff, you're not going to get it that way." You're gonna you're gonna have to get in your heart and travel. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just really I'm glad to hear that someone else has ha had a such a hard time reading it because <laughs> yeah, I thought I was the only one. Oh, people have. It's famous for being hard to read. That's that's not. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's well, not it's, news. <laughs> people have struggled. You know, it's just that I you want to sim you want to simplify your life, and it's just like. You're reading this and you're concentrating and there's so much jumble bumble and like, forget it. Let me just listen to my heart. Let me just do the things that I need to do from my heart. You know, I mean, why am I, why am I putting myself through this? I mean, no, really, why am I doing this? Why yeah. am I doing it? Because everybody says you have to read it. 
at the yeah. end of it baba says you have to read it and you just said it's not meant for everybody but the main thing yeah. is if you do things like you said which i'm yet trying to understand from the mind to the heart so, to the soul that is the most important thing for me yeah you know and if i can manage to do even 1/10 of that i think uh, i'm on the right path i think yeah no no baba not everybody has baba, baba didn't ask everybody to read god speaks that's uh, that's a myth for some people it 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 is more valuable to work from their heart did erich did erich read so so uh i i mean uh, baba is not told to read god speaks because a lot of people over here in india has a myth that baba is told that everyone should all his lovers should read the book at least once and i have never managed to read it you know i tried so many times i go two pages and i drop down then i go another two pages and drop down i went to the level that i made an audio file but i could never finish to read the book i should go off to sleep halfway through yeah. so sorry rakesh are you with jimmy modi on the god speak class yeah okay so are you are, are you i mean are you understanding and are you because you said you're yes. actually trying to read the book i can never understand any of the books forget about god so speak. this is my point i don't mean to be mean or anything but you know there is no clarity also when i'm doing this uh, you <laughs> I know don't for want me clarity. if i don't understand it it's no point it's no point but i, I think i mean i don't feel it and i don't understand it both i yeah. think baba actually said you don't have to understand it he just exactly. he, he prescribed it as a reading because each word is like a spiritual bomb it has nothing to do with us understanding it it's yeah, just yeah. easy it's, it's not required sometimes people have read it aloud and uh it actually uh it, without understanding it but at least it uh it, it, it you absorb some of the truth mm. that are in there i put some yeah. uh, links in the chat just to uh mm. some Excellent. quick youtubes that might at least summarize it for you <laughs> what i do is i get ward parks to do read these types of things a guy named ward parks yeah, he's great yes yes and let him distill it for me and i can sit back and enjoy it so i don't have to read these things <laughs> he's on I youtube the same, but i yet can't understand it i yet can't ward parks too, is on too youtube heavy. There's this, one, there's this one book infant intelligence now oh i could not get any make any headway on that but what i did is i got ward to give us a seminar on infinite intelligence and and he made it interesting something that i was not able to read he makes yeah it i saw that it's really good what's that makes it more digestible yeah yeah now, ashu your dad your dad is uh, gives does studies up there at upper marabad on god speaks mm. yeah who's dad rakesh ashut yeah ashima so he yeah, has a he reading does. i think every thursday in marabad in the library yeah. which is besides the samadhi so they meet for an hour hour and a half and yeah. i think he answers questions from god speaks yeah yeah but you know dev yeah just as long as at the end of your life she's it's gone you're, you're able to pass the test <laughs> you you do get an exam before you go on to your next life on god speaks <laughs> Hey Devia, Devia, I think your your mic is muted. Yeah, But so I then I'm definitely coming back next life if I need to get an exam. <laughs> you That's keep coming sure. back. You keep coming back if you don't pass, you know, you don't go further. You yeah. keep coming back and stay in the same. No, I like what uh, Jeff said earlier, just forget the freeway and take the side road. Yeah, absolutely. You know, just take the side road and just pray for his grace and just try to love him wholeheartedly that's all yeah. you know make it simple yeah, yeah i always like to read the stories you know the people who i mean the kiris book or or erich's book arnavas book have you read arnavas book the gift of god yes it's such a beautiful book it's amazing book 
Got it. And, uh, and when they talk about their practical lives, their lives of every day with Baba, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I always prefer read the books like that than, you know, more intellectual and metaphysical kind of, you know. The stories, the stories about yeah. what it was like. The to stories be because we are right there, you know, with them and we read the stories and you know, they make you feel the love and the compassion and the situations and the practical life with Baba, you know. Yeah. And that's what I like to read, you know. But so, just, Mr. Baba said you don't have to read. <laughs> don't read. But I think we should pray for Debbie. <laughs> Sorry? I think we should pray for you that you pass that examination. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. You, uh, Rakesh, mute us all and then we'll uh, think of her. <laughs> no. So Devia, Baba said, don't worry, be happy. <laughs> yeah. So Jeff, earlier, because I got in pretty late on this meeting, you were saying something about the planes not being important and that it is the higher self of the lower, uh, the higher self of your lower self? The planes of consciousness are the, really just the higher side of the lower self. Side, but we want to get to our higher self, which is Baba, which is the real self. When you talk about the planes of consciousness, you're talking about the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, and seventh? Yeah. Well, the seventh mm -hmm. is, the, is the... It's is Baba. Rich. Yeah. Yeah. But isn't uh, being on the fifth and sixth plane also quite a high plane and where you uh, uh, experience eternal bliss and things like mm -hmm. that? Yeah, but but uh, you don't have to uh, you don't have to you can detach yourself from that and go directly to Baba. So the Mandali, who are some of them are are even going to be perfect are, masters in their next life. <clears throat> they weren't experiencing that bliss and all those high experiences uh, mm. on the higher planes, but they're going to be um, perfect in some time in their next lives, many of them. Mm. So what I wow. mean is that they, you can bypass uh, the, the planes and go directly to Baba. But you can only do that if you're that devoted, right? <clears throat> well, yeah, you just keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, really. Uh, but is that wanting to be with Baba and being on the seventh plane also a desire? Okay. Would you call that a desire too? <clears throat> well, if you want, it, <clears throat> you could say that, but <clears throat> if you want to be loving, that's, that's, uh, that's the best want you can have. That's the best desire. Yeah. yeah. You want to be loving. Poor Baba said, you can't get higher than that. Even the fifth and sixth planes <clears throat> are not as great as that. Mm, well, it's going to be hard to practice, but I'm going to try to be loving towards everybody. <clears throat> now here, I'll tell you an interesting story though <clears throat> about, see, you, you can be in readiness to love everybody, but you don't necessarily, I mean, say, suppose a drunk comes, someone who's drunk and comes up to you. You may feel to keep a distance from them and stay back from them. You know, it's, <clears throat> but externally you're pulling back, but at the heart level, you can still be loving them. So in other words, what you do externally and what you do internally can be two different things. You can still love somebody, like, like Gandhi said, uh, condemn the action, but not the man. 
Yeah. M meaning sometimes you have to keep a dis say, oh, well, if I pull back from somebody, that's not, I'm not loving them. No, you can pull back from them, but still <clears throat> be in readiness to love them if they're ever in need. And there was one, I'll, I, here I'll just tell you, there was one woman, <clears throat> have you ever heard of a place called Mayher Mount? Mayher Mount is a place that Baba went to in 1956 in California. It's a little, kind of a little mountain. And there was a woman who <clears throat> was in charge of this play, Baba place. Her name was Agnes Barron. And she was a, <clears throat> a kind of a feisty, fiery, opinionated lady. <clears throat> but had a heart of gold. And <clears throat> so uh, when Bob was there in 56, uh, <clears throat> uh, they, Baba stay, was staying in LA, is about a mile, uh, an hour and a half away. So they drove from Mayher Mount to, to, <clears throat> to uh, Los Angeles. And uh, while she was in Los Angeles, she got in an altercation, a little argument with a woman named Ivy Deuce, who was the head of Sufism Reoriented. She was, you know, <clears throat> and so later on when Agnes was with Baba, I, I, Ivy Deuce wasn't there, but she was, she said, Baba, you say we should love everyone. I can't love every, I can't love everyone. What are you going to do about that? She was very kind of forward with Baba. You say, <clears throat> you say we should love everybody. I can't love everybody. What are you going to do about that? And Baba said, through Erich, Agnes, you love everybody. You just don't like everybody. And she, yeah. said, she said, well, Baba, I can live with that. <laughs> so, <clears throat> Because she really did love everybody. <clears throat> I, I mean, Baba wouldn't necessarily say that to everybody, but but she really loved everybody. But she didn't. Her emotional reaction <clears throat> varied in how she felt about people. But the, but she would give someone the shirt off her back if they were. In need. You know what I mean? So that's that's the kind of love that Baba is concerned about. <clears throat> Baba said to Arnavas, I, I didn't ask you to feel me, I asked you to love me. That's something to ponder. I didn't ask you to feel me, I asked you to love me. So loving your fellow beings, you might, you might know that you love your fellow beings, <clears throat> but some of them you like more than others. It's just because of our emotional nature. There's some that we, uh, we accord more with, we're in more in tune with than others. I don't know. Does that make any sense? <laughs> yeah, I think that was a very profound statement. What's that? I thought that was a very profound statement that Baba made. To honor us. Yeah. Yeah. But, but loving everybody is, um, I mean, yes, as you correctly said, you have to, we all love everybody and we may like a few people. But when you say love everybody, is it uh, just a thing that all human beings have for each other? Because I don't feel that love. You know what I mean? For everyone. In the sense, yes. Uh, I may take my shirt off my back for somebody because on humanitarian gr grounds, you know, I may help somebody, but I may not really feel that much for that person, to be very honest. Yeah. But, but it's not a matter of feeling. <laughs> like, say, suppose, suppose your neighbor, you don't like your neighbor at all, but mm -hmm. <laughs> she calls you up because she feels she's got to go to the hospital because mm -hmm. she, she's having... <clears throat> you know, say a heart attack. So you're gonna, you're gonna get her to the hospital. <clears throat> so in other words, how you felt about her was, was just superficial compared to what you would do for her. 
So by me taking her to the hospital, even if I don't like her on humanitarian grounds, means I love her? Yeah. <clears throat> it's not even on humanitarian grounds, it's on love's grounds. Okay. You know, for me, when you say the word love, it's straight from the heart. It's also a feeling for me. It's, a, it's an experience, yeah. you know, a feeling. But, it's uh, an emotion. But see, sometimes it's, uh, well, I, uh, let me, uh, uh, well, I'll, I'll, I'll share this. When, this is back in the 70s. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mara, Baba's Mara, was saying goodbye to this woman who was going back to the West. Uh, and I was just there saying goodbye to Mara. I was just going to be going back to Maribad uh, for the day. <clears throat> and so Mara said to this woman, she, you know, told her, now take Baba back with you. Baba will be with you and all that. But she also said, sometimes we feel very empty and depressed. But we know Baba wants us to be cheerful. And so we yeah. make efforts to be cheerful. Now, inside, I thought, I'm a young kid, and I thought, because this is in the 70s, I thought, wow, she was side by side with Baba all those decades. If she hadn't kind of mastered the experience of having a joyous, warm heart mm -hmm. full of Baba, then I thought love must be something different from what I thought. <clears throat> because Mara was radiated love. Her own experience of herself <clears throat> sometimes was feeling empty or, or maybe even bored, but she is radiating love to everybody. I mean, you could feel it. So what I mean, how you feel is <clears throat> how you feel, because uh, that might be on a particular day, maybe is can be independent of the love that you what you radiate yeah what you radiate or even what you what's what's kind of visibly there and it's important because a lot of baba people they have their feeling about themselves is kind of like um it's on a different track from the the love that they have in themselves in other words, you might say, you might feel, uh, I'm just, I'm kind of a selfish person. I'm moody. I, I snap at people and everything. But other people may feel a warmth and a radiance from you. But you're just focusing on how you feel about yourself. But are you in tune with, with the, whole, the whole of yourself? That make sense? Yeah, kind of. But um, because I, actually you froze, you know, part of the thing froze while you were speaking, so I didn't get all of it. But what you're trying to say is what we feel and what we radiate could be two different things totally, right? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and, and it's good to have confidence in the love that you have in you so that, you, so that your moods don't bring you down so much. Mm. Know that you're loving and but you're in a, a a bad mood that knowing that you're loving kind of keeps you buoyant so you don't go completely down with your depression thank you i mean i i don't know if that makes sense but because I, I realized after, Ma after that exchange with Mara, I never felt bad about if I felt empty or depressed. Or I, prior, prior to that, I thought, you know, when my heart is full of Baba and I'm feeling Baba, you know, that's Baba. And when I would lose that, I would think, oh, my God, what did I do? I lost that feeling. Uh, you know, what did I, you know, what, what have I done wrong? But after that, I never bothered how I felt. Those are just like passing moods. They're like time, summer goes by, fall. The, the moods, you, basically what I realize is you can't keep your, your moods in springtime. 
you know they're going to have to move into they have to move into summer eventually come around to winter and everything is des everything is died you know mm. and but then spring is going to come and you'll be back your your mood will be lifted again but all of that that's all against the backdrop of this love of Baba's love that's behind us. Mm. Anyway. So you're trying to say to actually have the love, you don't need to feel it? It's nice when you feel it, but not, uh, but you can't. Not necessarily. It's not necessary. Mm. There's a knowing. You can kind of know it without having to feel it. Okay. Yeah. Wow, oh, that's interesting. Very yeah. interesting. Jeff, you and I have talked about this before with uh, like, for example, when I, when I give example of my being at work and people being really rude to me over the phone, because I do like customer service and people will start shouting at me because I'm not helping with them, you know, because uh, they're, they're, you know, I don't know, their light bulb is, is flickering and they're upset at me or something, you know, and then, and then that feeling that, that I want to start shouting back comes over me because my emotion is there and I'm like, I just want to give, give it back to them because they're, you know, what, I just feel like it's unjust. But then that, there's that moment of when Baba's love kind of, when I just say his name and I feel, and I think of him from my heart, then what I find comes out of my mouth is actually way more loving and way more tactical than I would have ever thought of intellectually. And the words that come out are, very i don't know they're kind and they transform i've i've seen it change the situation to where they they go from yelling to all of a sudden to being oh wow i i never considered it that way well well thank you for your help i i was just you know i'm sorry i was just really stressed out you know and it just changes the yeah. scenario because i'm not i and i'm not feeling loving you know in my mind i'm like i i really don't like this person I don't like, they're, they're making me feel really horrible and I don't have loving thoughts, but Baba's love is beyond that to where it's beyond the emotion. And I think that's a very interesting, very interesting uh, practice. Yeah. You know? That makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. What he says, that's the... <clears throat> that's the way to go, actually. What's that? I said, I think that's the way to go. Yeah. I, there was a quote that I, of Baba's I kept in my pocket uh, all during the 70s until it eventually um, shredded in my wallet. But where Baba said, all differences between one another, all differences between one another are merely superficial and cannot affect the love we feel for each other deep down. So really, I mean, I, and that, to me, I felt that was a great truth. I knew it had to be true, that we really love each other. And we buy into uh, these crazy things that, that say we don't. You know, in other words, we really, if, if, you, if you went to the depths of you, and I went to the depths of me, we would find we were in the same exact place. We would meet on the shore of the same ocean. <clears throat> Does that make sense? We're, but all differences between one another, all differences, male, female, Indian, American, all differences are merely superficial. This is Baba saying, and cannot affect the love we feel for each other deep down. So I, I look at that, you know, um, someone a couple of years ago came up uh, to me and said, hey, Jeff, I ran into somebody today and said they didn't like, they, they don't like you. And I, and I, this is what came out of my mouth. They may not like me now, but one day they're going to love me. <laughs> Time is on my side. <laughs> I mean, one day Bob is going to put us together and they're going to see, we're going to see into each other through we're going to see the love that we're going to see that we love each other. But in the meantime, 
you know, people buy into, you know, my, my, your skin is, my skin is white, your skin is, is black. I mean, how ridiculous, you know, but people build up, you know, huge things on such the most superficial differences. Yeah. So did Baba say anything about the golden age, the period and stuff like that, when it's how many years, hundreds of years or whatever? Or was it in the next few years? It's going to be a long time, a long ways away. I don't think we'll oh. be. Able to. We are well, but we are in the winter of the world. <clears throat> the Kali Yuga, right. that started on a battlefield with Krishna. That's what Eric said. Uh, and uh, the, I think the next age that's coming is is the golden age, springtime. We're in the winter of the world. And spring is going to come, but it's hard. I, I don't think I don't think you can bank on <laughs> on golden age uh, in the next twenty years, thirty years. I don't think so. Yeah, Don Don Stevens was saying that the door the door of love was going to get. But this is what Bob was saying to him that the door of love was going to get more narrow, like narrower and, narrower and smaller and smaller and smaller to the point where, uh, well, yeah, we need the avatar again. Yeah. In human form. But it's going to get more narrow and it's going to be harder to focus on, on, uh, on love as time. And as the dark, as this, uh, the, this age, yeah, as this age kind of comes to a crescendo, it's going to get more intense to the point where you don't, you're not, what, what was that quote, Jeff, you said about 70 or, or 70, 30 or something about. Baba said that <clears throat> in the Kali Yuga, it's 75% selfishness and 25% selflessness. In a golden age, it's 75% selflessness and 25% selflessness. It never gets to be 100%. So Baba said, uh, Baba said that he gestured this. He, he, uh, you, I don't know if you can see me, but Baba said in the Kali Yuga, this much effort gives you, I'm opening my arms wide, gives you this much progress. In a, in Kali Yuga, this much effort gives you this much progress. In the golden age, this much effort, my arms are spread wide, give you just this much progress. So this is a time, if you can be loving at this, <clears throat> during this time, you are, you will grow spiritually. You'll grow in love. If you can express love in this time, you are you are doing a great service to your heart. Wow. And then isn't that, I, isn't that oh, go ahead, uh, Ashima, yeah. Ashu, yeah. Yes, I wanted to uh, say yeah. that <clears throat> I feel my love is very, very conditioned and it depends upon the behavior mm -hmm. of the other person. Uh, if they behave the mm -hmm. way I want them to behave, then yeah. I feel the love, or yeah. I otherwise I don't. But uh, now I'm thinking that even if I don't approve of the behavior and I don't feel the love, there must be still some connection. That's why I'm feeling the way I'm feeling when they don't behave the way I want, you know. So the conditions are there. <clears throat> those conditions probably still there is a deeper connection and that's why these conditions are affecting me. Yeah. <clears throat> but I'll tell you something to go a step further. That I, what you say I, is true. <clears throat> but here's one thing: when I started working at the center in Myrtle Beach, I thought Baba would would uh, draw the cream of the crop of humanity. But I found <clears throat> very I was very naive. <clears throat> I found out <clears throat> very quickly that Baba was drawing the a cross section of humanity from miser to philanthropist from scoundrel to saint from <clears throat> the all the extremes and Erich said 
he said that you know that you're in in the court of the avatar because all of humanity is represented in a in a spiritual ashram other ashrams you may find people that are more spiritually minded <clears throat> but your fellow baba lovers are going to cover the entire spectrum now so here's what i had to do <clears throat> because you you know just like you people kept violating my expectations of how they should behave so what i did over i would say 20 years i kept lowering my expectations of my fellow baba lovers i mean i mean to where they could get away with anything i mean I kept lowering and lowering expectations of them. Uh, and what happens is that then you can, I, I knew I had to do that if I was going to enjoy the company of my fellow Baba lovers. I was going to have to give up my expectations of how they should behave. Because, because when, as soon as they violated my expectations, my, the flow of my love would get blocked. You know what I mean? So what? I, so I didn't like that. I don't, you know, because then I. Jeff, you got frozen. Let's say it again. Jeff. Hello. Jeff. We're waiting for the rest of your sentence. <laughs> you guys, can you guys hear Jeff? Or did he, did he, no, he, no, he's frozen. No, no, no. Jeff is getting some more love from Baba. That's why he's yeah. frozen now. <laughs> we'll have to pray together. <laughs> Dear Baba. Jeff will beat me up if he hears all this. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Jeff, can you hear us? Jeff, you, if you can. Okay, maybe he'll come. He's log gone. Back. He'll log back. Yeah. He'll log back. Wow, this is so great that we get to have these meetings of yeah. wonderful people all the way in India. It's so wonderful. I feel so like blessed. Have you met any of these Baba lovers? I'm Adrienne, by the way. Hi. 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 I'm Samin. Hi. Hi, Samin. Nice Hi. to meet you. Same here. Yeah, Baba. You're Dinku from the other day. Hi, uh, yeah. Nice yes. to see you again. Yes. Hi, Baba. And Rakesh and Ashima, yes. you were also with us yes. Hi, everyone. This is Payam. Hi, Payam. Jai Baba. Hi. Jai Baba. <laughs> oh, Jeff Jai is Baba. back. He's back. Jeff is back. Yeah. Wow. He, he showered us with so much love, so we're all connected. He's, yeah, he's getting more love now. <laughs> Baba is done. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Baba is <laughs> I, something something happened to my uh, yeah. computer. <laughs> yeah. So I, Baba I, I was doing his work. <laughs> I, I was just saying yeah. to Ash, Ash, Ashu. Yeah. I, I mean, it seems ridiculous, but what happens that when you lower your expectations of how sh people should behave, they actually, <clears throat> because as Baba lovers, we're cursed with judgmentalness and criticalness. Mm. I mean. It's a curse, and so you have to work with it. <clears throat> but, yes. but as I kind of cleared a lot of that out of my, my value system, uh, people actually started treating me better. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because if, if someone is critical of you, you, uh, you don't give as much of yourself to them, and you're, you're a little bit wary. <clears throat> but when like with Eric, he was not judgmental at all. I mean, I mean, he, I mean, you could get, you could tell him anything. <clears throat> he did not, he, he could love unconditionally. Yes. So you want to take out the, un, the conditional out of there. <clears throat> yeah. And so you can actually enjoy, because mm -hmm. these standards that we grow up with, and they keep compiling as time goes on. Mm. As you get older, you can actually get worse. Yeah. You can even become more critical. All these young people, look at the way they behave. They're just going, you know, whatever. And you can lose <clears throat> the joy of people. But 
So uh, that's kind of what I did. Baba kind of had me doing that. And so it, it makes life a lot more fun. Yes. And, and I would say the behavior it, uh, overall, by and large, the, the way I'm treated is so much better than yes. the way I used to be treated. <laughs> Actually, good you're saying that, but what I realized while listening to you just now is that it's not even there, uh, it's not even friends. I realize it's mostly, you know, in India, we have big families and it's mostly, I realize my um, reaction is to the family members more than the friends. And it's not even their behavior towards me. It's their own behavior towards their own selves and their own lives and what they do with it, which yeah. makes me feel upset. And yeah. I feel that there's a blockage in the flow of love towards them yeah. just because the way they are dealing with their own lives. Yeah. But any of those, those is, are all, yeah. all like standards of a certain type yes, yes, that, yes. that block the flow, the natural flow of your love. Yes. You know, that, uh, um, so if you can clear it from your side, uh, I mean, it, it, I'm just saying it's well worth doing it. You just, you just have a lot more fun and you can engage with a, a wider range and spectrum of yes. people. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. And yeah. Yeah. Well, it's quite difficult to do. I mean, I think it would require a lot of practice, yeah. uh, you know, from within be aware of your reaction as well as aware of why the other person is doing behaving in that particular manner and then try and work through it. Yeah. It's well worth it because any, any person that you shrink from, you diminish yourself by that much. Really, you think, you think, oh, well, I have the right to like that person or dislike that person. Someone said to Erich one time, but Eric, so some people I just don't like. And the people in Mondeley Hall kind of laughed, you know, because they felt the same. Eric said, you may dislike somebody, but never assert that you have the right to dislike anyone. So that's one of those attitudes that we buy into. I, I, I can like and dislike anybody I want. I'm the boss here. You know, so Erich didn't quite, you know, give his, uh, he didn't quite agree with that statement, but he said it in a beautiful way. Don't, you may dislike somebody, but never assert that you have the right to dislike anyone. I mean, we, we wind up liking some people more than others, but, but that doesn't mean that we, uh, that that's the thing to do. We have to kind of work at trying to be more responsive and loving. But it's very interesting that, uh, um, you know, Baba says true happiness lies in right adjustment to others. And, and right adjustment involves self-forgetfulness and love. But true happiness lies in the art of right adjustment to other people. It's, it's just like you learn the piano and you start out with a little, you know, the individual keys and then you learn chords and then you learn melodies. And after a while you can improvise on the piano. So it's, it's not something you just do like that. That's what I. Uh, Debbie uh, has a question. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Uh, you know, uh, Jeff talking about liking people. Like you said, you may not like the person and Erich said, you don't have the right, never assert that you have the right not to like anybody, right? Yeah. So for example, if someone has uh, misbehaved or in my eyes and hurt me, you know, I mean, a lot of hurt, a lot of pain with somebody. And I realized that this is my karma that I have to deal with it in this life. So I dealt with it, right? I think I've dealt with it. And then I feel, okay, this is my lesson to learn from this person. And, um, you know, I, I don't want to be in touch with the person anymore. I've not forgiven the person, you know, deep down, I've not forgiven the person. But at the same time, I don't wish bad for that person at all. It's like, ta-ta, bye-bye. Now you, you know, do what you need to do. And 
that's it. Our journey ends here. Just as friends, our journey ends here. But sometimes I think that, is this the correct thing to do? Because I want to finish my karmic, I would like to, I don't say I would like to finish my karmic account with this person in this life. So I don't need to learn my lessons with this person again in my next life, with this soul again in my next life, you know. And I wish that person well. But I don't wish being in that person's life. I mean, I haven't reached that stage in my life at all. Nowhere near that where I can forgive so easily and, you know, uh, like the person, as you said. Yeah, yeah. So <clears throat> is, that, is that a way to go to? In the sense, I have, the person is out of my life. I don't want to deal with that person because I have that choice. I don't need to deal with the person, you know. And it's like, fine, we, ha we, we knew, we, you know, we did what we did for so many years. You had your karmic account with me, my family, with whoever, whatever. And now that's all finished. And I wish you goodbye and, you know, carry on. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, but I haven't forgiven the person in my heart. Yeah. So <laughs> is that the, I don't know, is that the, I don't know, is that the correct way to go? I know, like, again, I, it's not by the book. I do things with my heart. I try to do things with my heart. But then again, I know I, I don't think it's correct because I haven't forgiven the person. <clears throat> but, you know, like you say, <clears throat> Uh, you, you, you can take things like that to Baba and not have to work it out with that person. In other words, if you go into your heart and you feel a bitterness in your heart toward that person, you can go, you can give that bitterness to Baba. And no, there is no bitterness. There's okay. just indifference. No bitterness. Okay. Just nothing. Absolutely nothing. Okay. Okay. Give the, give the absolutely nothing to Baba. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> You know, give the indifference to Baba and let him work it out. <clears throat> you, in other words, whatever, whatever is blocking the flow of your love, give that to Baba and, and just see what happens. But I don't mean just, I mean, feel it as deeply as you can, how you feel toward that person, how they've so-called made you feel. How, how you feel now. And then I, what I do is I just imagine the energy of that flowing out toward Baba before me. And just, you know, and keep doing that until you feel much lighter about it or till you feel some warmth. But there you're, you're, give, you're giving it to Baba and not, you don't necessarily have to work it out with that other person. That's it. Okay. And, and yeah. there's a Not lot you can do and, and you can, so you don't have this lump in your heart or whatever you want to call it. You don't have this indifference in your heart. Mm. Or I, you know, this, yeah. Great. Thank you. Thanks. Just, didn't Moni say something about like, only Baba can forgive, can, is truly the, the one that's truly capable of forgiving. Like we can't, we're not really capable of it. It's hard. She said but something. Like that, the right? best way, <clears throat> see, the, <clears throat> uh, Baba revealed something to me, but that's an, a, another whole thing about forgiveness <clears throat> is the way, well, I, it's pretty hard to explain. It would take a bit, but I'll just throw the idea out. The way that person treated you, if you could feel how that person treated you, you, you don't realize that you did that to them. You did that. You were just like that. You did that to someone else and you never asked Baba for forgiveness in the past. Like suppose this person betrayed you, I, I, you know, betrayed you and you feel horrible. So what Baba kind of said to me is feel that, Baba, I betrayed some, I, I, I made someone feel like this in the past. Please forgive me, please forgive me. You're, you, that, you think that person should be the one that's asking for forgiveness. But see, you did that in the past, 
but you justified it and you didn't ask Baba for forgiveness. And that person is in your life to get you to ask for forgiveness for the way you had been in the past. I don't know if that makes any sense. I, I mean, there's a whole background of how to explain that, but. Where, where was this? Was this directly from Baba or where was this from? Yeah, this is something that Baba flashed to me in a millisecond in the tomb. There's a whole story behind it. <clears throat> but what we do is say, if your father was an alcoholic and he mistreated you, <clears throat> and you're, you know, you're angry at him and, and everything. What you do is you take how your so-called father has made you feel. And you say, Baba, you're, I made someone in the past feel this way, this wretched, this hurt. Mm. And I never ask you for forgiveness. I'm asking you now, Baba, for forgiveness for the way I had been in a, past life. Does that make any sense? It seems counterintuitive, but there's a deep truth to it. So when you yeah. huh? that, you never have to actually forgive anyone for anything because you're just the one that's always asking for forgiveness. And then yeah. God, and then that empties our heart of that resentment maybe. Or yeah. And you're no longer a victim. You know what flashed to me when when you're saying this instantly I know to to be able to know. I don't know. How to, I don't know if it's going to come through, but but to be able to know. Like for me, for instance, there's some there's somebody from my past who still affect my my mind. Where I if I think about them, I get affected, and I can think about the exact specifics of how they've hurt me. Mm -hmm. And really, the only way that I know that intimately how they've hurt me is because I've actually, I, I, can, I can really sit with myself and be like, oh, I know, I know exactly what they did because I've mm -hmm. done that. I know exactly what that flavor is because yeah. I know that flavor myself. Yeah. I've, yeah. Done, I've done that and I know that they did it to me. So I'm, I'm like projecting on them being like, it's your fault, but it's really like I... It comes from me. I know exactly what that is. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. And if you ask Baba for forgiveness for that, then that person loses their role. They don't have to play that role with you anymore. That, that person's in your life, was in your life, to get you to try to for, ask for forgiveness from Baba. Oh. And sure. once, you've, once Baba's forgiven you, then that person no longer has to play that role for you. And in fact, your, your relationship to them could even change. It may not, they may be the same uh, jerk that they were, <laughs> you know, but, but at the same time, sometimes their behavior changes toward you completely. Yeah. Because they're no longer there to, to be the one that, well, <clears throat> they're, they're no longer there to be the one that irritates you in that specific way. Their role has changed because you've already been forgiven, so you don't have to be irritated anymore. <laughs> anyway, it's, it is get into very <clears throat> subtle things. <clears throat> but we actually help one another. I mean, just to give you an example, suppose, and I've mentioned this, suppose I have a, a jealousy in me and, I, and I'm in denial about it. And I, I, I and, and plus, I don't want to even go there. I don't like the feeling of jealousy. But I, I'm so, and I don't even get into any relationships because I don't, I don't like to feel jealous. But suppose, so what does Baba do? He gets me to fall in love with that woman over there. And, and, and we, I, I, I fall in love with her and we have this right time. But after three months, she, she falls in love with somebody else and bam. Now the jealousy is uh, now the jealousy is in me. Now I have to face it. Now I become conscious of it. Now I can blame that woman. She should have been true to me. She betrayed me. But actually, she's actually helping me to bring up the jealousy which I need to give to Baba. 
In other words, I was in denial about it and it was just sitting there. Now it's come up. But we blame that person. I don't want to have anything to do with her anymore. And that guy that she fell in love with, you know, but it's a very compassionate system that Bob has created. And when we need to, when we need something pulled out of us, somebody will come along in our relation in our life that irritates the hell out of us and brings out things in us that we need to see and give to Bob. And it's, they're not to really to blame. I mean, that you know, so we, we do help each other. Mm. I mean, I don't like it. I, I, I didn't create this system. <laughs> so they're kind of our teachers. They're kind of our teachers. You know, yeah. I think it's like a lesson that we need to learn. <clears throat> and the yeah. universe or Baba presents us an opportunity over and over again yeah. till we actually learn it. Yeah. You know, yep. and <clears throat> I think forgiving, as you said, when uh, you give your, when you actually forgive, which I know, but I can't do that, is when you forgive somebody, you actually forgive yourself. Yeah. You are it really the, <clears throat> that your job is not to forgive that that person. It's to forgive yourself for having been that way yourself in another lifetime. And, and in which you you never asked Baba for forgiveness. You just justified it. And so now you have an opportunity to to feel that and then ask Baba for forgiveness. Mm. It's, in fact, when somebody did this to me, Jeff, you know, whatever, whatever I went through, not like not an issue with a certain person. At the end of it, maybe because of Baba, I actually thanked the person. I didn't forget the person, but I thanked the person after so many years in my life that you, you know, that uh, maybe this is my ego coming in also saying that, uh, you know, I have been so good to you all these years, even though you were, again, it's being judgmental and egotistical, but. I, I, at least I feel I have done my good karma towards you, even though you, you did what you needed to do. I've always been true, kind, you know, in my way towards no. you. <clears throat> so you have, you know, you have actually helped me eradicate my karma, I think. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but again, by even thinking this and saying this, I don't know if this is my ego, you know, coming in. <clears throat> okay. Well, it, your heart will kind of tell you how free you are of, of, of the situation. You know, it, 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 if your heart feels kind of relatively free toward them, then it was genuine. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Jeff? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, what about, you know, okay, this is when you, you interacted with a person and these feelings come up. But what about, what, uh, how should I put it? Okay, sometimes when you meet a person for the first time, you sort of have an instinctive liking or a dislike for that person. Where does that come from? <clears throat> well, here's what we do. <clears throat> I, I, the way I kind of look at it, I, I'm only seeing your forehead though, Dinku. Sorry, sorry. <clears throat> yeah. I'll have to sit up. I was yeah. relaxing. <laughs> yeah, okay. Or, or, or tilt your screen a little bit. <clears throat> <clears throat> we, we, what we do, our, one of our big mistakes is that we we say, I wonder how I'm doing. And instead of going to, to the love that's in us, we check our sun scars. And our chan scars say, oh, I'm, I'm, lou I'm feeling lousy today. Or, <clears throat> you know, we check our sun scars instead of our love. How are you doing today? Oh, I have Baba's love in me. What, why don't I go there? But I go, I go to my sun scars. And, and so I'm meeting this person for the first time. And, and it's my sun scars hitting up against their sun scars. And we're saying, well, I don't like that person. Or I feel attracted to that person. <clears throat> but this is just taking a reading of our sun scars. But, <clears throat> but if we went to the love in us, we would realize that we kind of feel a, a, a love toward this person. <clears throat> you know what I mean? In other words, your cultural background may be <clears throat> Uh, that you're a Hindu and <clears throat> you're coming up against a Muslim, you know? And so all of your accumulated Hindu sanskaras are coming up against uh, a, a Muslim sanskaras. <clears throat> and they may not, they may not, they, they, there may be a dissonance there. 
But th those are just your sun stars. It's not your love. Your, mm -hmm. your, your love is on a different level. But we, like I say, we just say, oh, uh, that person uh, rubs, me the, rubs me the wrong way. But like I say, that's just, in other words, too, you, your, your sun scars may be in harmony with somebody for a while. And then three hours later, uh, your sun scars have moved to a, shifted to a different place compared to those. And now you're a little bit in disharmony with them. You know what I mean? But that's just yeah. bringing it all the way down to the sun scaric level. <clears throat> but if you, if you can be in the love part of yourself, <clears throat> You know, then the, the then the sanskaric reactions are just secondary, and the love that you have is primary. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's. I mean, we put such a stock. You know, I don't like that person. <clears throat> well, it's just that your sanskaras don't like them in that particular moment. But, but is it because we've had an interaction or a disagreement or whatever in the past with that person <clears throat> in a past life that's could, come up when yeah. you meet the soul again? It could very well be that. But it, it, even that's irrelevant. You know, because it's the fact that you really love each other is, is the real thing that, that's, that needs to be seen and not... <clears throat> How you your how your um, your sun scars, and whether they mesh or harmonize with their sun scars in that moment, or whether they're <clears throat> uh, whether they're dis dissonant. I don't know if that. <clears throat> so you got it. It's I think it's important not to believe your sun scars. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> I mean, it's kind of nutty. Huh? It's reminding me about what when you were talking. Um, uh, that, that that other night when um what was it about waking up in the morning and like wh where you can start your day you can start your day in that stream of sanskaras or you can start it in by what, what was you, you gave a way better explanation dress but, your soul and baba that one yeah like the, like, <clears throat> like how you well, function to do what you're saying right now like not not just the okay <clears throat> I'll, I'll, descri I'll describe to you how I wake up in the morning. And I, I don't sleep very long. So I wake up groggy. I wake up in my son's scars. And I'm, they're kind of heavy and I'm groggy. And so what I, with Baba's name and focusing on Baba, I try to work myself away from the continent of my son's scars over to Baba's ocean. It may take, it may take an hour. It may take a while. <clears throat> so that I can start my day with love. <clears throat> and then, then that love is what fuels my day rather than the sun scars that I, that I woke up in. Does, does that make sense? <clears throat> That's really amazing. And then we, 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 emerge, we emerge usually in our sun scars. Something is... Um, Something's making a little bit of noise. In other words, we wake up in our sanskaras, but you want to get, we wake up in our conditioning, but we want to try to get to the unconditional part of ourself before we start the day. And that takes a lot of work. You know, rather than I'll wake up in the morning, I'm on, I wake up on the wrong side, uh, on the wrong foot. And then I, and then the world has to pay the price, you know. Yeah, I've been doing. That, yeah, I wake but... up in a bad mood, and then I go downstairs, and and this and that, and <clears throat> but it's possible to be proactive, find the love that's in me, however long it takes, and then let love be fuel my day. And it. But, but in order to do that, I have to wake up about 4.30, folks. <laughs> I have to wake up early. That's very helpful. To, Thank you. Get, yeah, there's the, there's the, you wake up in the sun scars of, you know, the continent of your sun scars. And you want to get through the forest of your sun scars over to Baba's ocean. So that you can start your day 
in the expansiveness and, and the love of, of Baba. <clears throat> now that, that takes, that's not easy to do. I mean, that sometimes you just have to start where, you know, you didn't have a chance to get to the ocean. You got a view of the ocean, but you didn't actually get to the ocean. Then you have to stuck and you have to start your day from there. You know, kind of half, half uh, successful at that. You know, Jeff, I've been experimenting with this and uh, I usually wake up or I usually start work at um, 7.45, but I set my alarm to 7.30. And so I wake up at 7.30 and the first thing I do is I, I've been trying, I go up to this picture of Baba and it's the one where he's looking right into the at you and you can't really escape his eyes. And so I just, I just stare into his eyes for a good 10 minutes until I, and then I'm just giving him all of, all of what I can. And what I've been seeing is that I, I can start to see my actual train of thoughts that, that I would have lived that day. Mm. But instead of living them, I am giving them actively to Baba. Wow. Yeah. And then, <clears throat> And then what happens is um, he's just, he's just what I'm just looking at him and, and there's this, I can see, almost see the flow of it leaving. And then uh, it changes, it changed my whole, my whole day. It really did. Yeah. It made me yeah. not stressed in the same way, you know, even though the same scenarios, the same people calling the same, yeah. you know, but just different day, different day. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you for yeah, sharing. No, it's well, and and if you if you woke up at like six forty five, you'd have <laughs> another half hour. <laughs> I don't know about that. Six forty five. But because if you can't, if you jump on the first train of thought, you might wind up in Z Missoula, Montana. You know. I mean, Absolutely. you you wanna you wanna be on the platform long enough and then choose <clears throat> the train of thought you want to get on. Mm. Hopefully it goes to Maribad and Marizad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and not to, uh, you know. Madison. To... Yeah. yeah I, I, don't, I don't know if anybody else does, but I wake up actually with a lot of anxiety. <clears throat> I don't know yeah. why that is, but, but it, just seems yeah. like, it just seems like it's not, almost some, sometimes it feels like it's not even mine. It just feels like it's like it's, it's just in the air or something. It's not mine. Don't blame it on I'm me. I'm not saying it's hers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wake up no. with anxiety too, but it, I no. don't think it's mine either. <laughs> well, well, a lot of the things that you feel are not necessarily yours. I mean, just like you could, if you had a shortwave radio, you could pick up songs from China. You know, all, all of these things are going through us. <clears throat> Sometimes the anxiety is not ours you know, but you still have to deal with it. You know, you still have to transmute it from a conditional experience to the unconditional. Now, is that transmuting though? Is that part of Bob? Do you think that's what Baba meant when he said in discourses that we're, we're sort of like re little relay stations of his <clears throat> work? Is that part of well, that? Well, that, that, that makes that possible. <clears throat> If you can transmute with, if, with Baba's name and centering in Baba and remembering him, you're taking the sun scars that you wake up with, and those are getting transmuted into, <clears throat> into sun scars that will be subservient to love. Yeah. That rather than those sun scars being an impediment to the flow of your love, uh, they, they, they're lightened up and they, <clears throat> they, Go to the side so that love can be the doer mm. a little bit more. Yeah. So it's like being proactive <clears throat> about your day <clears throat> rather than just, you know, just taking it passively. You're taking an active approach <clears throat> in, in working on the internal, your, the, your internal atmosphere so that that internal atmosphere is what fuels your day. Mm. Yeah, because it feels really real, you know, Jeff, it's very, very alluring to, I mean, especially the, the I imagine the anxiety being like a, 
like one of those uh, sea urchins, like you grab onto it and it just sticks on you. It's mm -hmm. just really a sticky, kind of spiky yeah. thing. And yeah. To witness how real I really believe it is and to yeah. witness it leaving, I see it with, you know, I'm looking at Baba and, and, and it, he's the truth. <laughs> and to, to see the fallacy even within my physical, mental, and emotional experience is it being the most real thing to me, this thing yeah. that I, all of a sudden, I through, I mean, with Baba right there, it's not real anymore. It cannot be the truth. Yeah, yeah. beautiful. Yeah. yeah. And be. Baba's name, you can flow Baba's name through this and wash out, take some of the charge out of these sun scars, these impressions yeah. that, <clears throat> that we're, are going to impel you one way or another. Yeah. You, you kind of clear out some of the charge so that the, 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 the deeper flow of love can kind of work. You become more of a vehicle instead of a base of operations, a little um, <clears throat> um, a station master. You... <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> no, it, it's, I mean, Darwin used to say, don't think of yourself so much as a base of operations. Think of yourself as a vehicle or a conduit. Mm -hmm. Almost the entire world, they, everybody thinks I am the base of operations. Wow. I run my life. Mm -hmm. I'm in charge of my life. And, you know, like Adrian, you know, in singing, <clears throat> you want to be a vehicle of the deeper feelings, you know, <clears throat> to let any kind of impediment or obstruction is, is, is blocking the flow of, of the love that you want to convey. I mean, <clears throat> but that's the same, same with all of life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. You know, and, but it, th th these don't just magically disappear. I don't think it takes, it takes work. Yeah. Takes effort. I, I should probably go here, but Samin, any did you have any um, thoughts there or questions? No, no, no questions today, Jeff. But yes, lots of thoughts, lots of food for thought. Yeah. And yes, I will ponder over these. Yeah, and like I say, Baba, yeah, this, Baba, we wouldn't be doing this if Baba wasn't inspiring it. He, yes, he, absolutely. He's, he's the guy behind the. Yeah. Behind the operation. Like Alan yeah. was saying, I do the same. I stand in front of Baba's picture and I just, uh, I just keep staring at his eyes and I don't question or think I allow him to do what he has to do. Yeah. And uh, it just feels very different. I don't put too much thought into it. Um, but I love the way you explained that when you wake up in the morning, you can actually choose your sanskaras over the over Baba. Yeah. 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 I think I shall put that into practice yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. It's and believe beautiful. me, believe me, Baba, that means the world to, to him <laughs> that you would get up and stand in front of his photograph and try to offer your day to him. I mean, that means the world to him. You know. Yeah. It really, really, I mean if we could actually see how Baba feels about it, we would be in tears, how much it means to him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jeff, hey, one thought is just, just coming uh, just Jeff? now. I'm just thinking. Oh. Sorry. Oh, wait. What, what, uh, put a pause button. Yeah, yes, Pari. What, was that Pari? Um, I, yes, I had a question about, you know, waking up with Baba. Uh, so, keep trying. We're missing. You're breaking up. Is that Hindi? <laughs> Okay, one minute. <laughs> Yo, no, hello. <laughs> yeah, I, we can hear you now. Yeah. 
We got gotcha. you. Oh, okay, that's good then. So yeah. Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah. So I was saying that I have fibromyalgia. Um, so um, waking up in pain is very common uh, in that condition. Uh, but on the days that I don't wake up in pain, my first thought is of Baba. But when I'm waking up in pain, uh, the, the first thought that hits me is, oh my God, I'm in so much physical discomfort. And I don't want that to be my first thought. Yeah. Like, like I mean, I, I am blind as well, but I never wake up thinking, oh my God, I'm blind. I don't want that. Yeah. Um, but but in terms of the chronic pain, I don't want that to be my first thought, even when I am in terrible amount of pain. So how can I work on that? Yeah. No, uh, I would, I would, I mean, I'm just giving you what I would do. Just send Baba's name to the pain. Let, let, let Baba's name fl flow through the pain, not with the idea that the pain is going to go, <clears throat> but just, just, just may, uh, d may, let Baba's name aim it toward the, the, your body where you're feeling the pain and just radiate Baba's name. Okay. And not with the idea that it's going to go, you know, it might, it might lessen it, it, you know, I'm sure that it, it would help, but that, that's not the object. The object is to get Baba's name to the concrete thing that you're feeling, you know, your attention is on your pain <clears throat> and you want to kind of bring not just your attention on the pain, but you want to send something baba's name to that pain okay does, does that make yes. sense try that yes it makes me. a lot of sense you know so that you're not just a you're you're not a victim <clears throat> you are you you are letting your pain remind you to say baba's name mm -hmm. okay that's the, yes. that's the kind of thing i do if you didn't have any uh, i mean Sometimes if I wake up and I, if I don't feel pain, the f pain gives me something concrete to send my Baba's name towards, mm -hmm. you know, and your, yeah, your pain can, then your pain will remind you of your beloved. Okay. Yes. That yeah. makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Is there another group? So mean, yeah, but you had you were had a question. Yeah, actually, Jeff, I wanted to know. Like sometimes, even there are no triggers around. I mean, you know, we just need triggers to get you working on certain things. But sometimes, even if there are no triggers, and you're still feeling, you know, not fully. Um, like the springtime. So how do you explain that? Is it because of the sanskaras or is it the, <clears throat> the environment, uh, you know? You mean you, you wake up and you're kind of in a heavy mood, say? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, even it could be you could wake up in a great mood and then suddenly through the day, maybe there is nothing going on around you. But you're just uh, just feeling a little low, and then suddenly you start feeling strange. And I'm wondering, is that the chemicals in the body, or mm -hmm. is it the environment? Yeah. You know, the the just it, the whole environment around. Or... See, it can be all of those things. It can be any of those things. But but what I do is see. So you, so you kind of feel down. You're brought down. That's, yes. That can remind you to go on with Baba's name or centering yourself in Baba. So yeah. you, that's so you use that as a reminder. To, okay. It, it, these outer things impinge on us. We have to counter with something within to counter it. Otherwise, those outer things pull us down. Take over. Yes. Yeah. So okay. even if you have to go off to the side somewhere with Baba's name or centering in Baba or looking at a photograph of Baba so that your inner side is, is more powerful than what, what's coming at you from outside. 
It could be your immediate environment. It could be the world. It could be this pandemic. Whatever it is, you don't necessarily have to know, but all these things can remind you to remember Baba. <laughs> and, and you'll actually appreciate the fact that if everything was fine, you might actually forget Baba, but now something painful comes along and now you, you are reminded to remember Baba. And so this is his doing again. <laughs> yeah. And Baba said, Baba said this, I mean, it's extraordinary. He said, my name is greater than I am. My name is greater than I am. <clears throat> so that, because Baba took his name from the beginning of his mission, all the way his life, Baba took his own name. So that he has invested that name with so much presence and power and love. So <clears throat> anything that gets you to, to say his name, not from the, up here in the head, but from the heart. You know, even if it's just once in a while, just Baba, Baba. Or each step you take as you're going down the street, Baba. However you do it, it then it gets to be in your system. And you can, and it'll carry you along in times when you get pulled down. His name will sometimes, when your energy drops to a certain level, you know, if you open a refrigerator and you leave it open for a while, you know how the engine starts up. Eventually, your energy, when your energy drops a certain level, Baba's name will start up in you to make up the, the difference, to counterbalance what you know, your, <clears throat> the, the, your lowered vitality. That, Thank you. Sense? That's what yes, I... Yes, absolutely, yes. Yeah. Thank you, Jay Baba. Yeah, yeah Jay Baba. Well, <laughs> thanks a lot, Jeff. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see. Um, yeah. We'll see what I wake up, what some stars I wake up in, in tomorrow. <laughs> I love that. It feels like, like it's such a helpful thing. Like when you wake, you wake, you're waking up on scars. Like who's who's talking? So it's Adrian. I I just appreciate that. I just appreciate all the ways that we can um, disempower the yeah. the idea that like we are in control of what's going on. You know, it's like we have agency, but there's so many things like when Samin was saying too, it's like, we're just walking into all these landmines of like other people's sanskaras, all this weird stuff. We have no idea what's going on really. Yeah. Like yeah. all we know is that Baba has placed us in every circumstance with, with precision and every thought that we have, it might seem chaotic and mindless, but, or, you know, but it's actually like Baba's precise, work with each of us like his infiniteness is so so much that like he knows and has orchestrated e even every like layer of thought that we have is yeah. part of the fabric of his of our lives that he's like woven for us over the course of like trillions of infinite years and lifetimes and all these things it's just I think it's just so awesome to remember that as much as we possibly can that it, we're just we're just doing our best to like feel our will and feel our uh, our agency and be ambitious towards like getting you know doing baba and being with baba and then also at the same time we just don't know anything and we're like little babies at the same time but both are yeah. equally yeah you know it's like you wake up i mean this is kind of gross but it's like waking up in the morning with your sense scars it's like waking up and there's like a poopy diaper like it's just the same thing you have no control over it it just and then you just have to say baba my diaper and then he'll just clean yeah. it and then no. then you'll poop again and then he has to clean it again but like yeah. without him yeah. it just gets so stinky up there <laughs> i think some baba people think that baba just spot checks them every once in a while <laughs> you know like Oh, you're okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I'll stop by, see Alan and Adrian how they're doing, and oh, yeah, they seem to be doing. And goes on to, he is with. It's hard to imagine. He is with each one 
every moment, all, he's on the other side, <clears throat> living every moment with us. It's that personal. It completely, per I don't know, I like to say, I don't know how he does it. How could he be with everybody at the same, how could he be here in this, you know, at this <laughs> desk and be over there with you in there, you know, following every little movement of you to make sure that you're getting closer and closer to the divine, <laughs> you know? And then he's over there doing it to me and then Ashu and Rakesh and- And all the little critters rolling around it's, outside. That, it's like personal, it's not, <clears throat> it's not like, oh, this blanket love. Oh yeah, Baba loves everybody. Yeah, yeah, right. You know, it's, he's right down there in the most finite details. It's so true. You know? And he, and sometimes he would would say some well like like one time Bob was driving on a one of the streets of London it, there was a a couple in the back seat <clears throat> and uh, as they were coming racing along these roads Bob pointed to a, uh, a, a an apartment on the second floor and they looked up that's the apartment that they had lived in. Uh, when uh, when they were first married, 20 years before, long before they even knew of Bob. Wow. You know, he was, uh, they, he was already with them, you know. Yeah. So it's like that, you know. I mean, he's that with everybody. One time... Alan and I... Yeah. When Alan... When I, when I was a little kid, my family used to go to this pizza place near our house that was run by this, um, you know, like another immigrant family like uh, like ours. And so we used to love to go there. And um, I remember it. Sometimes I would go in with my dad and we'd pick up the pizzas. And then like how, 30, 20 something years later, I'm driving with Alan, whom I had met. And he, he drove me over to Lakeshore where that pizza place was. And he says, did you remember there used to be a pizza place over here? And I said, yeah, that, that four star pizza, that was where, that was our spot. That's where we used to get our pizza. And he said, did you remember, did you remember like an, an old, like an older lady with an accent? Did you remember? And I'm like, oh, that's interesting. I do kind of remember her. Cause you know, I just remembered them. We used to go there all the time. And he said, did you ever see like a little kid back behind the counter? And I said, I think maybe one time I saw like a little boy, like a little boy back there. And he said, that was me. That was my family's pizza shop. Oh, God, beautiful. When he was like, <laughs> I was like, I'm older than him. I won't say how much, but I'm kind of older yeah. than him. I was like an older kid and he was like a little kid. And I, we had already met. And then, and then the pizza yeah. shop closed. <laughs> they moved. Yeah. And yeah. then that third 20, whatever years later. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Isn't that amazing? Bob, it's just like, but it's so funny because our relationship is so like, it's so woven in Baba, you know, like he, he yeah. came to Baba after we were, we were uh, boyfriend and girlfriend for a couple of years and he became a Baba lover and then we got married. It's, but our relationship is so like centered in this, yeah. this feeling of like past lives and Baba and, it's so magical. Well, tell them the three things. What's that? Yes, I was telling Adrian to tell you guys the three things that happened. What are the three yeah. things? Well, can you tell you don't know? What are the three things? We got, oh, oh, on our wedding? We, oh, we got, we're taking over. I don't want to take over the call. We got married January 31st at noon. And then... Oh, okay, and then we were, and then our officiant was kind of a, sh was a little bit of a schlep beak. I mean, he just kind of was a little, he wasn't really on top of the <laughs> details. And so it took us a while to actually send our marriage license in. And by the time we got it back, it was like, it, we, we opened up the marriage license and the date that it was issued was February 25th. Yeah. And then I was thinking about it later and I realized that our, the man who officiated our, that presided over our marriage was born on July 10th. Oh my God. We got, we got a, we got Amartiti, Baba's birthday and Silence Day all in one marriage. Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> no, and, and Baba, I just think delights in, in, in doing these types of things for us. I mean, it is good. 
you know, all the, you know, just, I mean, he's got to entertain himself too. He has yeah. to, you know, watch <laughs> us. He, so he does these things and then he sees, you know, just like when you hide Easter eggs for kids, uh -huh. And then they and they get their bags and they go out and they're looking for all these eggs and everything. How <laughs> exciting it is for a mother to see this. Baba put all of these things for us, grown-ups. All these things that we run across. Oh, wow, look at this. <laughs> oh, so true. It's so he fun for him. Treasure hunt for us. Our lives are just filled with all these little treasures. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, well, I got to go, folks. You're Thank keeping you. up me up past my bedtime. What is can I can I just uh, Thank say you, something Jeff. here? Yeah. Hello? Who, yeah. Who's this? It's Dinku. Oh Dinku, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh would you all like to see well I can only show you the window of uh where Baba used to stay with the Dada Chanji sometime when he'd be in my area? Ashiana? Yeah. Sorry? You mean Ashiana, their, house, their home? No, no, no. This is in Dadar because it's oh. right across from oh. me, my place. Oh. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Just a sec. It's not Manzili Meme. Are you in Dadar? Yes, I am. In Parsi colony? Yeah. That's right. Oh, I know and that where Nar Nargish Dada Chanji lived. Let's see it. <laughs> Visualizing in mind. There was a uh, one of the uh, Arnavasa's sister Nargish oh. lived in Dadar, and when you went there on your way to Maribad, uh, you you would be so tired, and you could sleep on this bed that Baba had slept on at her house. Oh, beautiful. But we can't see it, thank you. There's no... There's oh, no. I think her camera is off. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't know. My, I've turned my camera on and I've... Uh, I don't know. Huh. Just, her, net, her net connection must be weak. Oh. Uh -huh. Yeah. You got to uh, pay a little more on the bribes. <laughs> Could have bribed them. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Well, I don't know then what's happening, but uh -huh. now our, our longing will just grow and grow now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, can I can I take a picture of it and send yeah. it to you guys? I don't know. Yeah. S you could send it to Rakesh because he he, yeah. he he's the tech he's the tech expert. Yeah, he's got okay. WhatsApp. Yeah. He's got all that stuff. So we should all be friends on WhatsApp. Are you guys all fr WhatsApp friends? I'm friends with Rakesh on WhatsApp. Yeah. We okay. all on WhatsApp. Well, okay. folks. Okay, Jeff. Uh, okay. Go. Always nice to see you, folks. Absolutely. Great. It's heartwarming. Thank you. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, Baba. Thank you. Yeah, Baba. Thank you. Yeah, Baba. Thank you. Bye bye, Bye everyone. Bye bye, Paris. Bye bye. Bye bye. Yeah. Bye. 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 Yeah, Jay Thank Bob. you. Yeah. Bye. Next time, I'm also going to hear Jai from Baba. Ellen and Andrea that how did you all come to know about Baba? Maybe next time. It's yeah, too late that would for be you. Great. Yes. Yeah. I'm yeah. at with, with your pizza story. Please also yeah. tell us your Baba story. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Rakesh said send yeah. us some pizza. Send yeah. us some pizza. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so, you, you even know her Baba contact. Ashi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's that? Cindy Lowe. Cindy Lowe. Oh, okay. Her her music teacher. Yeah. Okay. Oh, wow. oh then okay. you can see Jay Baba as well. She's going to talk. I think uh, today Saturday in the evening. She's going to talk on the Hyderabad group, Hyderabad oh, Sawas okay. on YouTube. You want, I can send you the uh, YouTube link. Okay. She's talk, giving a talk today in the evening. Who yeah. is this? Cindy. Cindy. Cindy's doing something. Um, who, who is it? Cindy Lowe. Oh, Cindy. Cindy. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just read it in the morning an hour back. Cool. 
Okay. Jai Baba, you guys. Jai Baba. Good night. Jai Baba. Jai Baba. Bye bye. Pari. Yeah. Bye bye. We have we have to feed our little kitty. She's twenty one. <laughs> oh. <laughs> One years old. She's still pasta. going. I'm going to feed the pasta. The pasta. Yeah, we're going to give her pasta. That's <laughs> yeah, little chicken. That's her little food. Cute. His little thing. It was really nice to be with you all. Thanks for listening. Same here. Same here. Thank you. See you next Thanks, time. Thanks, Rakesh. Yes. Thank you. Bye bye. Jai Baba. Bye. Bye. Jai Baba. Bye, buddy. Thank you. Bye bye. 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 Good night. Jai Baba. Bye, Alan. See you later. Bye, Rakesh. Bye. Rakesh, I've sent you the picture. Yes, I'll forward it to everybody. Okay. Okay. Bye, Jai Baba. Bye.